so many drums so many drums hello people of the internet i'm seal for sealtheproducer.com and the producer's blog and today it's part three Okay, people so welcome back to this tutorial series now in part one and two we discuss the basics of compressors and how they work and what their sound is today instead we're talking about all the special effects all the fun and funky stuff that you can do with compression now in case you missed part one and part two i'll put some links in the description and i suggest that you go and check out those ones first i'm hyped for today's tutorial so let's get right into it so the first trick that i'm going to discuss is the um, new york compression technique or the uh, parallel compression technique or as I like to call it the everyone's been using it for years technique it's pretty straightforward you get a dry signal like this drum bust right here it can be a kick drum a snare drum or a combination of both and you send it in pre-fader to another auxiliary channel like so you then compress that auxiliary channel and most times you overly compress that auxiliary channel and then you can blend back in the compressed signal together with the uncompressed signal now this serves two purposes one is to get some attack and some punch out of that compressed signal without affecting too much the uncompressed signal and the second purpose is to give some energy and some character and some vibe to the uncompressed signal now i'll play this sample right here it's the mix from last week and there's no compression right now. Actually, let me mute this parallel compressed signal and I'll slowly start to introduce the compressed signal and we'll start to hear the effect of it. Now, I'll play just a parallel compressed signal so you can hear what that is doing. This is without any compression on the parallel um, channel. And this is with. Now that's just the parallel channel. You can tell how more aggressive and punchy it's getting, although since the performance was already pretty consistent, we don't really hear that much of a difference in uh, attack or in uh, level as much. We do, however, hear a lot of ambience around the snares and kick hits and a lot of energy and it's a lot more aggressive and a lot more punchy. So that's what we're trying to achieve right here. Now, parallel compression can be used in a variety of ways. You can use parallel vocal, you can do a parallel bass, you can do parallel everything and you can do parallel processing with everything it doesn't have to be only uh, compression it can be literally anything it could be um, distortion it can be chorusing it could be anything so that's parallel compression now going on to something with reverbs for example now reverbs and drum reverbs especially are really interesting and you can get some really interesting sounds now if we start to then apply some compression to that um, reverb return that starts to get really interesting Interesting. So, for example, I have this uh, drum reverb right here, and I'll play the the dry signal, and then I'll insert the reverb so you can hear what that is doing.
Okay, so it's pretty clear, although it's um, actually a little bit boring. The reverb is a little bit boring. So what if we try to apply some compression to the reverb return? Now, let's solo the reverb and let's listen to that. So now let's blend that reverb, uh, that compressed reverb back in with the um, uncompressed signal. Now, the tails of each hit are getting much more uh, ringier and a lot more interesting and it really has a different vibe than just a, a reverb on its own. So that that was interesting. Now, moving on to something like saturation instead. Now, um, saturation, and we'll do it here on this parallel bus just because we have it set it up. And I'll just pull up like a, um, a distortion of sorts, maybe even this basic logic distortion and let's just set that out for a second and let's hear what that is doing Let's mix it back in with the original signal. Now, distortion works by basically killing the, the peaks at a certain level. So it's basically crushing the dynamic range and it's a sort of a version of a compression steroids so it's it's a different sound it's a slightly different sound but it'll uh, cut through a mix uh, much more than just pure compression so that's another thing that you definitely want to try out so what if we try to combine both the reverb together with either the saturation or the compression now i'm gonna play around with them a little bit so you can hear what they're doing Now you can hear how the distortion was a lot more uh, punchy and uh, dirty, especially in the low end, a lot more crunchy in the low end. And the, the compress is not really doing much since we already have the uh, compression on the reverb. So many drums. So in this situation, I like the combination of the reverb and the saturation, the distortion. It's really working for me. Let's hear that again.
And of course you can go extreme or more gentle, you can do whatever you want. So at this point, what if we try to use a stereo compressor on the drum bus? Now, what if we feed that processed signal back into the drum bus? or we send the uh, all three channels so it's the the dry signal together with the parallel compression the distortion and the drum reverb we'll send them all out to the output just because it's easier this way and i'll insert a stereo compressor like an ssl bus compressor right here or an api 2500 so uh, let's play it Now, to me, this is the best uh, combination as it's really punchy, it's really aggressive, it's, um, it has a lot of character, it's different, but it doesn't sound so much compressed. And that's because we only applied very gentle amounts of compression at several stages instead of compressing a lot at one stage. And this is the most important thing. So, in my free ebook, The Five Mixing Techniques That You Should Be Using Right Now, I discuss similar techniques to these, so combinations of effects like compression and distortion and all of that good stuff. So um, you can find it at seetheproducer.com slash theproducersblog, and there's a sign-up form on the right, and if you're on my mobile, it'll probably be at, at the bottom of the page. And you can download it, uh, read it, let me know what you think, and so that's all we've got time for today. Make sure to like and subscribe. Drop a comment below if you'd like to know something more, if you'd like to see something else in the next video. And I'll see you in the next